ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ونعوذ بالله من النار وعذابها ويقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه كل امتي يدخلون الجنه الا من ابى قل من يضى يا رسول الله قال من اطاعني دخل الجنه ومن عصاني فقد ابى ويا اخوه الاسلام والايمان السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اوصيكم ونفسي المقصره بتقوى الله جل وعلا وبطاعه الله وطاعه رسوله ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يرزقنا طاعته وطاعه رسوله وان يجعلنا من الفائزين وان يجعلنا من اصحاب الجنه Dear brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh for all praise all credit all thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator our sustainer our savior in the day of judgment may Allah save us that day and I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator and I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi is the final and the last messenger from Allah to mankind and to jinn kind whoever obey muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam blindly and follow his sunnah will be guided and he will attain success in this life and the after and allah will admit him to jannah may allah make us among those people and whoever choose to disobey muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and disregard his sunnah and believe all his sunnah will be among the losers doesn't matter how intellect doesn't matter how rich doesn't matter how famous doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are if you choose it, choose to reject the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to reject his sunnah you will be among the losers in the day of judgment may Allah protect us from that in the Quran Allah advised the believers he advised the people he advised the prophets to have taqwa piety and taqwa is something residing in your heart The problem is most of us taqwa become something we dress it's a dress code or the way we project ourselves to the people taqwa is something you have to have in your heart that what your prophet said at taqwa ha hum at taqwa ha huna wa shiru ila sadri that mean you must you have to know your taqwa start inside your mind it has to be inside as your iman has to start inside to believe from in the oneness of Allah in his books angels prophets 
the day of judgment that one day it will come for sure hundred percent guarantee you as a human being Allah will make you stand stand before him and he will ask you about everything you did so you better perfect your action that means as long as you believe in that day that a day will come no friends no father no mother no sons no nothing you're running after in this world will benefit you because you will stand alone before your creator who knows everything about you before even you do it and you will be asked about it a muslim should think about that day that's why we muslims we should think about that day so may allah make us true believers in that day and cover all our bad deeds because you as a muslim you have to prepare because we are not here by being Allah told us why he created us, why we here. It's not something that should bog your mind as a Muslim. What is the purpose of my life? You know your purpose of life. It's to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By all means, you will fall short. Sometimes you will do mistakes. Sometimes you will go astray. But all the time, Allah's mercy is for you. For you to make a U-turn to come back. So as a Muslim, every day you have to strive for that. To make tawbah, return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us a sincere tawbah. Now today, inshallah, we'll try a little bit to talk about this, what we call nasiha. <coughs> nasiha is something Muslim not, or Muslim say, oh, it's nasiha, I'm making nasiha to you, I'm giving you nasiha. While most of us don't know what is nasiha. That's why if I ask you what is your religion, you say praying, fasting, Prophet, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make it all in one single word, two words, the religion all. He say Adin and Nasih. So you as a Muslim, you have to know what is Nasih. Because the translation for it is little, not complete. Because most of them, they say, and Nasih, sincerity. Sincerity is part of it. Giving yourself wholesome is part of it. Having no selfish when you're worshiping Allah, when you're helping others, when you're trying to better yourself. That's part of Nasiha. Purifying yourself first. Knowing you as a human being, you have to be correct first before you start to correct other people. That's part of Nasiha. So we'll go through the hadith, we try to detail it. No, the time is too short. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the, uh, to the companions, Abu Tamim al-Dari radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ad-Deen al-Nasih Ad-Deen al-Nasih Ad-Deen al-Nasih Thalatha, three times. So the companions were intrigued. They said, Liman ya Rasulullah? Qulna liman? Qala lillahi he said, you as a Muslim, you, you as a believer, as a Muslim, man and woman, you have this religion of yours, the deen, which Allah, alhamdulillah, guide us to it, which Allah accepts as the only religion in the deen, in the Allah Islam. You have to know that as a Muslim, and accept it 100 percent because some muslims doubt some muslims till now they believe that it's okay christianity it's okay you, no it's not okay you as a muslim is part of your faith to accept that the only true religion is islam that's it period nothing behind it you have to believe that no negotiation on that that's why when you hear Muslims say interfaith, uh, mixing the faith, no. You ask a Muslim, as long as you say you are a Muslim, nothing else behind it. No other religion is correct. No, that, no other religion is even worthy of studying or following. You ask a Muslim, you have to accept that. You don't treat them bad, but the religion-wise, 
you have to do the Islam is the only religion Allah accepts. And it's the only true religion. Don't doubt about it. And you have to make that your kids and all your family know that is the only religion. Because we have Muslims right now, they doubt in their religion. You see, it's okay. They will say it's okay to be a Muslim, but uh, it's not a problem, the other religion. No, there's a big problem. Now the Prophet said this religion, the basic of it, all of it. If you take Islam, Iman, Islam, all what encompass everything is being sincere and pure. You sincere and you pure. That means when you do something, you don't do it half half. As a Muslim, your religion shouldn't be half half or 70 30. No. That means you as a Muslim, you accept Islam as your religion, be a true Muslim. That's what Allah asks you. And it's a part of making nasiha. Because the Prophet said, the first nasiha for whom and to whom? For Allah. Now you as a Muslim, how you give Allah nasiha? How you do nasiha for Allah? You start correcting your tawheed. Because the problem we have in the Ummah, most of us have Tawheed. But our Tawheed, we inherit it. We don't study it. We don't know it. What we found our grandparents and parents believing and doing and saying, we take it. Without asking if it's correct or not. And you Muslim, you have to know when you become adult, finish. What someone else did, said, it's not your problem. Allah asks you to ask about the knowledge and to follow only one single human being, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That means your tawheed, you have to know what is the tawheed of the Prophet and the Sahab. Because most of us, we have tawheed, the tawheed is not correct. Really, I'm sorry to say, it's not correct. Because still now we have Muslims who believed that a shaykh who passed away 100, 50, 60 years, till now have powers. Till now can do good. Till now can make, uh, you can ask Allah with him. We have those Muslims today. Allah. They visit graves. They visit where Aulia or Shuyo passed away their villages. Ask him to ask. Imagine that. It's a shirk. It's something which will destroy. And we don't consider it. Because the people who passed away is our ulama, our muftis, our shuyukh. We know them good. All the people, our grandparents, our parents say they are good people. And we see them visiting their graves. And you have till now a Muslim who will take his money or travel to a place where someone died, dead. You call him, he won't answer you. You need water, he won't give you water. Even if you need small bread, he cannot give you bread. Himself, the one who's dead, need water more than you. He need help more than you. But you go asking him to help you out. You go make him dua for his blessing, for Allah to bless you. That's why a Muslim has to know what is Tawheed. Or you find two, three now a Muslim who worship Allah, fast, love this day. Till now we have Tamaim, Hujab, Amulets, think someone will give you a right for you and say this will give you luck. Imagine the Prophet told you Allah right wrote your luck before you born. In your mother's womb, Allah wrote all your assets, everything. What you will get, what will happen to you, what you won't get, how rich you will be, how poor, all is written before you come to this world. You have to believe this as a Muslim. You don't go to nobody to tell you, hold this, take this, wear this, start this. It will give you protection, it will help you. It's a part of shirk. But till now, most Muslims, till now they believe in these things. So, part of making nasih alillah, you correct your tawheed first. You know what, what the Prophet tell you to believe in. How you should believe. 
what not to believe, what not to say, and what to say. So you as a Muslim, if your tawheed is not correct, you're not sincere toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tell us why He created us. And He told us, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصُيْنَا لَهُ الدِّينَ هُنَا الْآَ He didn't command us only one single for Him. Worship Allah sincerely and following the straight path. Not only you worship, it has to be sincere, purified, corrected. You as a Muslim, you just say, okay, this is what my parents did. This is what, no. Allah told us, till kaumatun ad khalat, laha ma kasabat, walakum ma kasabat. Anyone who pass, Allah said that he's gone with his deed. Allah won't ask you about him. Allah won't ask you what he did. So you as a Muslim, try to know what is your Tawheed. It's something which most of us don't study. You study how to pray, how to do things, but you don't study the Tawheed. Correct your Tawheed. Wallah, if your Tawheed is not correct, all your deeds are gone. Zero. So may Allah purify our hearts. May Allah correct our Tawheed. That's why you have to study it. Wallah is very important. Because it's sad, we have some question. We see a Muslim ask you, brother, can I go visit this grave and this person? Can I do that? Or can I send money to make Zabiha in a, someone's grave? A Muslim. Because he doesn't know. So all you see a Muslim wearing something in his body, you know for sure he, he thinks that we protect him, not Allah. He think that that something he's wearing can give him risk, not Allah. Or hang something in his business or in his car, believing that will protect him, not Allah. It's a horrible thing for a Muslim. Because it will destroy all your good actions. So being sincere to Allah is having the correct tawheed. Knowing what is shirk, avoiding it by all means necessary. And he said, the Prophet said, you be sincere and pure and wholesome to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here, we have a big problem in the Ummah today. Because most of the people, if you tell them this Sunnah, they believe that you can worship Allah correctly, but without following the Sunnah. Anyone who told you that you can follow something beside of the Sunnah and succeed, that's a big lie. A big lie. That's why the Prophet says every Muslim deserves Jannah. If you are a Muslim, men and women, as long as you say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, you accept it, you will go to Jannah. But he make it condition, unless the one who refuse. And they ask him, who will refuse to go to Jannah? If I come to you, I say, okay, brother, you refuse him to go to Jannah. Will you accept that? You pray in five times. You fast in Ramadan. You go into Hajj. You give in Zadaqat. Zakat in the name of Allah. Someone say, you refuse to go to Jannah. But the Prophet said, anyone who obey him, that means you follow the Prophet. The way he worship Allah. The what he believe in. How he believe it. How what he accept. What he doesn't accept. The way he behave, the way he worship Allah. If you, as a Muslim, try your best to follow him and obey him, the Prophet said, Go to Jannah. May Allah make us among those people. But he said, Anyone who disobey him, and here's the problem. You see, a Muslim, you tell him this is not the Sunnah. He will say, No, Shaykh so and so say it's okay. Would Allah ask you about Shaykh so and so? No. Even who is your father, Allah will ask you. For him, it doesn't matter. Who is your grandfather? Who is your mufti? Who is the sheikh of your country? He will never ask you about that. The only human being you will be asked about is who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he will ask you about him. He will ask you about your prophet. And if you say, I believe in the prophet, but I didn't follow his sunnah. 
I believe in the prophet, but what my sheikh or what my mazhab or what my people worship Allah, that's the correct way. The sunnah is too hard. And you will be asked about him. And following him is the only guarantee of guidance. You cannot follow nobody and you'll be guided. Allah Rasulullah. And he's the only one again. The Allah said, if you obey him, you did obey Allah. He's the only one. Your parents, Allah said, be kind to them. But if they say disobey Allah, no. The only human being, Allah said, follow him blindly. If you follow him, I will guide you. Why into Tiyahu? Tahtabu. Is only one single human being, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he is our example. And Allah told us in the Quran, He is your example and the best one. Now you as a Muslim, do your best. Allah do your best. Especially anything you say, this is religious man. Anything you say, this is worship. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today is easy to know. You can know what is the authentic sunnah of the Prophet. Do your best to follow it. It will be hard. You will fall short. Sometimes it will be strange to you. But do your best and the intention to be sincere. This is my Prophet. What he did, I will do it. Doesn't matter what someone says. This is my Prophet. He said, don't do it. I won't do it. Doesn't matter who does it. Does it. That is being sincere to the Prophet. You study his life. Because most of us, we know his names. But if you go a little deep, you will find yourself, you don't know your prophet. If you don't study the seerah of the prophet, his life, you want to understand this religion. And if you want to love this religion, study his life. How he lived with the people. Wallahi, you will enjoy the religion. Because you will love his character. You will love the way he lived. You will love the people he raised up. From the darkness, he made them the best human beings to be followed till end of days. He's the only one who did that. All aspects of your life, he did it. He passed it by a flying call. You study who is your prophet. Study his life. What did he do? How he lived? How he slept? How he ate? How he walked? How he treated people? Study it, you will love this land and you will love his soul. And be sincere to the book of Allah. You say, Nasir is not only sincere, you be sincere, pure, that means no ego, no self benefit inside, selfless. Whenever you do something, you do it with purity, with sincerity, be it religious and non religious. Because it's the entire religion based on that. And he said, for the book of Allah, here again, most of us, we have problem with it. Because you will see a Muslim who travel to a foreign country without knowing the language, knowing nothing about it. In 20 years, he will master the language to be a teacher of that language. But you will see a Muslim living with the Quran 30, 40, 50 years, doesn't have even two his memories. Till now cannot read it perfectly. Just compare that. Some of us, I will say majority, we came to this country, we don't speak English. In 10 years, 15, we speak perfect. English. While we are Muslim for 30, 40 years, we live in with the Quran. Till now we cannot read the Quran correctly. How are we going to talk to Allah? Because the Prophet will complain. And why you say with the Quran? Because the Quran is one of the things Allah will give the ability to speak in the next life. In the Akhirah, Allah will give the Quran a tongue to speak. Now, if you and the Quran go to judgment, as the Prophet said, How you say, Allah, I came to a country, I don't know the language, but in 10 years I was master of it. But your Quran, I'm living with it 30 years, till now I cannot read it. How you will say to Allah? Because most of us, we have that situation. We hear 20, 10, 15 years, 
We know every street, every corner in our mind, every street, every law. But till now, we cannot, some of us cannot read the Quran, even from Tabara to Nas, we cannot read the Quran. You say it's hard. If you take only 10, 20 minutes a week, in 10 years, you finish the Quran. 10 years, 10 minutes a week. It's less than the time you spend on your phone looking at rubbish. It's less the time you watch TV for no reason. It's less the time you discuss politics for no reason. So the Quran is something which judgment will happen between us and the Quran. We will ask about it. So try your best to be sincere to the Quran. To give yourself a time to read the Quran. It's not late. Don't say I'm old. It's not an excuse. Don't say I don't speak Arabic. It's not an excuse. If you start today, today, every day, one single ayah, give it 10 minutes, 10 times. Allah, in a few years, you will master the Quran. Give it a time and see. And be sincere to the leaders of Muslim Ummah. Now we have two types there. The one is the rulers. Alhamdulillah, today we don't have rulers which sit by the Islamic rule. We have democracy and things which are against Islam. We have people who inherit the Islam, they do whatever they want in Islam. But you have to know in Islam, security is more valuable than personal interest. If you know the place, the ruler, is secure in the country, that everyone is safe. You as a Muslim, you should, you should agitate that security, that security, that security. You should let it be. And call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second group is the scholars. Which their meat is poison for you as a simple Muslim. You, are, you shouldn't joke about the scholars of Islam. Especially the Sunnis, the authentic scholars, who everyone accept those are people who know the Islam, working for Islam, true to Islam. You as an ordinary person, you shouldn't put your mouth on them. Islam don't have do it for yourself. You don't have that in Islam. You don't take the Islam, you do it for yourself. No. If that was God care, Allah won't send the prophets. But Allah sent someone and taught him for 23 years. 23 years, he's teaching him about this being till he completed. So you as a Muslim, don't just take one book or listen to 10 lectures and make yourself as a scholar. Don't do that. Because if you say something which is not correct about Allah and about deen, it's a lie. And you, when you lie about Allah or on Allah, he will judge you for it. So anything you say about Islam, be sure it's authentic. And today it's easy. Alhamdulillah, Allah give us scholars who Allah make their heart clean and pure and sincere. You can ask. Fas'alu. Allah didn't say just accept. He said ask. Your doubts, you have to ask about it till it get clear for you. You don't follow someone blindly, only the prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said the deen is easy. In the deen are useful. So you as a Muslim, when you have a doubt, ask about it. Don't just sit and say, okay, shall so and so said, no. Ask what the prophet said, what Allah said, to the people who knows it. And you take it. And you be sincere about it. You take it for the cause of Allah. Not because you like the person or you hate the person. So you as a Muslim, you have to be careful giving fatwas, giving edicts in Islam. Because what you don't know, Allah won't ask you about it if you don't try to know it. But the day you try to know it, you have to make sure you know it. And you follow what you know. Deen, our deen is deen, religion of study. Religion of learning. That's why the Prophet 
طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم. You Muslim, you have to know it's not optional to study your religion. It's not optional. If not, if you have time or if I want to, no. The prophecy is mandatory. Mandatory upon every single Muslim to seek knowledge. Which knowledge, Ya Rasulullah? Knowledge about Allah, about your religion. Now, if you don't have that knowledge, you sit in there only keeping time. Allah will ask you about it. Did you seek the knowledge? The Prophet tell you it's mandatory. What did he do about it? So you Muslim, you be sincere. Sincerity doesn't mean that you just can pray five times. No, you do it for Allah with a whole sum, not 50-50, not 70-30. Islam, you take all Islam. You don't take part and you leave power. You take the whole Islam, you hold it. As we say, Allah didn't say for you to be perfect. No. Fear Allah, worship Allah to the best of your ability. My ability is different from yours. Yours are different from mine. You might be able to do things which I cannot do. I might be able to do things you cannot do. Allah won't blame you about that. He will blame you if you don't try your best. So we should be trying our best to be sincere for Allah, to his prophet, to his book, and to the leaders of Islam. وأقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إن الله غفور رحيم ربنا لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه ويا إخوة الإسلام والإيمان أكثروا من الصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى في هذا اليوم العظيم فإن الله وملائكته يصلون عليه وقد أمرنا بالصلاة عليه حيث يقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. So dear brothers and sisters, we're talking about you as a Muslim to be sincere and wholesome when you face in this religion, when you practice in this religion of Islam. Islam is a wholesome, it's about your entire life. It's not one single part. It's not only you are Muslim in the masjid, out of the masjid you're not Muslim. You are Muslim only with the brothers and sisters inside your home, you're not a Muslim. Or you're Muslim inside your home, outside at work plus, you're not a Muslim. That is not Islam. Allah said, accept Islam wholesome. You as a Muslim, entire. And you have to believe 100%. There's no religion. Allah will accept only Islam. Don't doubt about it. We say, you can negotiate in dealings. You can be lenient in dealings in Islam. But in the matter of Aqidah, in the matter of the creed of Islam, of accepting that Islam is the only true religion, no negotiation, brothers and sisters. You don't negotiate that one. You have to be 100% firm on it. Your religion is the only true, true religion. Doesn't matter what other people say. Doesn't matter what Muslims do. Because we have some bad Muslims who are giving the Islam bad name. But you as a Muslim, you have to believe Islam is the only true religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe that and hold tight to that. You might feel short, yes. Sometimes you'll be lazy, you won't practice it, yes. Sometimes you don't want it, yes. But believing, you have to believe 100%. And you have to be sincere in practicing Islam. Now the last one the prophet said, you as a Muslim, you have to be sincere, selfish, when you treating the masses of Muslims. That means the ordinary Muslim human being, you have to be sincere to him. Now ask yourself as a Muslim, when you're lying to a Muslim brother or any human being, are you sincere? No. When you're cheating them in dealings, 
Are you sincere? No. When you're taking their rights, are you sincere? No. You cannot confirm that as a sincere Muslim who is truly a believer why are you treating other people bad? It won't work. To the point, the Prophet Sallallahu used to take buy up on that, pledge on that. When someone come to come to Islam, he will say, okay, promise me these things, that you will perform it as a Muslim. Jarir ibn Abdullah said, Bayatu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala iqamis salah wa ita iza wa nushu li kulli muslim. The time I came to accept Islam, I promised to Rasulullah. Upon that, I took my shahada. That I will pray. Establish my five prayers time. I will pray on time, not when I'm free. On time. And I will pray it perfectly. And I will give zakat. We Muslims, we shall pray. Most of us don't take zakat in, uh, serious. It's a serious matter in Islam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I take promise I will be sincere to every Muslim I met. Now ask yourself as a Muslim brother, when your Muslim brother come and asks advice, do you tell him the truth or you just mask it? We Muslims, we have bills of right. Before this constitution or any Western constitution, 1,400 years ago, our Islam gave a bills of right between you and a Muslim. There are six of them. Any Muslim have that right upon you, you have the right upon him or upon all. One of them was just when he come to you and ask you advice, you have to give him the correct and the right and the sincere advice, even if you don't like it. Even if it's not on your interest. As long as he asks you the advice, you give him the truth. But today we don't have that in the world. To the point we trust the non-Muslim more than the Muslims. And that is an awful thing in Islam. If you Muslim, you arrive at a position, at a state where you don't trust your fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. You trust the non-Muslim more than your Muslim brothers. Something wrong with you too. You're not sincere. So we said again, you as a Muslim, you have to give advice. We don't have in Islam, do it for yourself or let them live, let me live. No, we don't have that in Islam. Especially concerning the people who you have authority upon. You don't let your family do whatever they want you sit. Allah will ask you about it. The people who listen to you, follow you, you don't let them do whatever they want and you sit and they say, oh, it's freedom. Wallahi, the day you die in the government, freedom won't benefit you. You will know that day you don't, you're not free. You have a, a maker, you have a creator who asks you to do things and you refuse to do it. So we should be sincere. Give advice, the correct one. And being advice is not being nosy again. You don't enter in people's private life, chucking it. Don't do that. You give your Muslim advice in secret, in private, not in public. You don't disrespect them. Allah honored human being. Even the bad people, when you give them advice, you have to be respectful. And when you give them advice again, especially if you're a young man who went to study, when you're advising your parent, you have to be respectful. When you're advising your elders, you have to be respectful. Not because they don't know you have the right to insult them, no. Imagine, Allah asked the Prophet Musa, one of the greatest human beings, to go to Fir'aun, the worst human being ever created, is Fir'aun. Allah said, if you go to him, Musa, when you go to Fir'aun, you are the prophet. He is the worst human being. But speak to him in gentle manner. In gentle manner, respect. Don't just go insult him. As today we have Muslims, when they say a Muslim is doing wrong or someone, they just yell at him. You don't do that in Islam. Because the righteousness is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You convey the message with respect, with knowledge. If you cannot do it, stop it. Stopping is better than dealing with that time. Because the consequences will be worse. So may Allah give us knowledge about this religion. May Allah help us and help our fellow Muslim brothers. So we have 
uh, Muslim brothers suffering in Tokyo, in Tokyo and Syria. You ask a Muslim, you don't, you don't just sit and say, oh, sorry. No, you don't do that. If you cannot help them financially, and it's easy to help them financially, by all means, $100, $200, you can give it. There's a lot of organizations which will help. You have Muslim organizations, non-Muslim. But you ask a Muslim, you don't sit and say, oh, this is sad. That is not your role. You have to react to it and do something about it. If you cannot do it, you pray for them every day. Every day when you pray, say Allah to ease their difficulties. Allah replace for them what they lost. Allah forgive the dead. They are Muslim brothers. They have right upon you. It's their right. As a Muslim, you are a Muslim. If you know you can help, don't sit. Ask your family, your friends. Anyone you know can help, let help. 100, 200, 400, Wallahi, you can do it. If you know you don't have the money, you can pray for them every day. So please help. Please help. They are your fellow Muslim brothers. Doesn't matter color in Islam. Islam, we don't have status, we don't have colors. We have Muslim brotherhood. That's all we have. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ارحم إخواننا اللهم ارحم إخواننا في تركيا وفي في سوريا وفي جميع أنحاء العالم يا رب اللهم ارتوه بهم يا رب العالمين اللهم أنزل عليهم سكينتك ورحمتك ولطفك يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم ارحم محطاهم واغفر لهم وارحمهم وادخلهم الجنة بسلام يا رب العالمين واشف مرضاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عافهم يا وعمنهم في بلدانهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وازل الشرك والمشركين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين Don't forget your mask, your brothers. The rains and get to see it. It's from your pockets. It's a video.